Welcome to this LiDAR 360 tutorial. Today we will be focusing on the use of the strip alignment toolset in version 4.0 of the software. First, launch LiDAR 360 and load the point cloud data that needs to be corrected using the software's strip alignment functions. Navigate to the strip alignment toolbox and click on strip alignment to open the user interface for this tool. Once a strip alignment window has loaded in the lower left corner of your screen, click the button with the three periods on it to set the working directory or a place where the intermediate and final output files will be saved to. Next, click Open Trajectory File button, which has a big blue plus sign it, and select your pose data file. Here our pose data is stored as a TXT formatted file. An open trajectory file window will then load and you must work under the info tab to match the required fields or columns with the data headers found in the input pose file. Use the drop down menu to correctly assign field names to each column found in the input data set. It is important that your input pose data and point clouds reference the same coordinate system. Here the grid X and grid Y columns are used to identify the horizontal coordinates of both the trajectory data and the point cloud information. Our height field defines the z-coordinate for these 3D data sets. If the pose data set you're inputting into LiDAR360 does not have a grid X and grid Y column, you must identify and select the coordinate system which matches the coordinate system where you are looking to break into segments or strips during subsequent stages of this tutorial. Pose data coordinate systems can be defined under the Select Coordinates tab shown here. Now that all required input data columns have been identified in the Pose file and assigned their correct headers, we can click Apply. We will have to select the portion of the trajectory that we will want to split into segments or strips. It is best to set the projection mode to orthogonal at this point and switch to top view. Then click the draw polygon icon located in the strip alignment window and place the vertices of the clipping object in the desired locations. Set a new vertice by single clicking the left mouse button once. It is helpful to use the point cloud as a visual reference layer when deciding where to place the extents of the polygons. Double click the left mouse button to finish drawing the polygon. Now choose the split trajectory button and the individual pose data segments will be displayed on the screen, each in a different color. Since we only want to use the trajectories located within our planned survey flight area, we must select and remove the unwanted trajectory segments. To do this, we will use the to Delete Trajectory Files button to get rid of selected segments in the strip alignment window. Click Yes to permanently delete the unwanted trajectory segments. Once you have isolated the trajectory segments that define the windows of time during which your target LiDAR survey data was collected, we can use these individual segments to cut the input point cloud data set. Click the Cut Point Cloud Based on Trajectories button. Then, in the Select Point Cloud File window, make sure the sample data file that was originally imported is selected before clicking OK. When prompted, click Yes to add data to the current project once the function completes. The split point cloud data sets will then be added to the LiDAR 360's project list of point cloud layers. To prevent confusion, it is helpful to remove the point cloud that was input at the very beginning of this tutorial. After doing so, click Match Point Cloud and Trajectory button and you will see the trajectory strip and point cloud section pairings become color coded. Let's now use the automatic boresight calibration parameter value calculator found in LiDAR 360's strip alignment toolset. To do this, we will first click the transform icon. Now, before we calculate the boresight correction error, let's investigate the alignment of individual strips in their uncorrected states. Open the profile window and adjust the buffer size to 0.1 meters or 10 centimeters. Make sure the check mark is shown next to this value. Make sure the Profile button is highlighted in the Profile window and draw a line over a flat and pitched surface such as a roof, building's rooftop found in the point cloud data. Zoom into and pan around the point cloud to visually examine the current alignment qualities 
that exists between different color-coded trajectory point cloud pairs, which we will refer to from here on as strips. A high quality between strip alignment will show little vertical offset between points of different colors when viewed in profile. Rather, a high quality alignment will show multi-strip clusterings of points that are uniformly mixed. The different colors from well-aligned strips should blend more like coffee and milk than oil and water. Let's now open the transform window and click calculate to automatically calculate the boresight calibration angle error correction parameter values. By default, only the angle error parameters, delta roll, delta pitch, delta heading, are checked for the automatic calculation. It is recommended that you calculate the angle error correction values separately from the XYZ delta or offset distance correction values if you are required to do so. When the automatic calculation is finished, the alignment quality statistics and boresight correction parameters fields will be populated. Notice that the after alignment error values are less than they are in the before alignment error reporting fields. This indicates that the automatically calculated boresight calibration values will improve the quality of the final point cloud once applied. We can also click generate report button to generate an automatic alignment quality report that contains the before and after alignment error values as well as histogram charts that describe residual distributions. This report is helpful when you are trying to compare the results of different calibration parameter values or documenting your processing workflow. To visually inspect how automatically calculated boresight correction values will alter between strip alignments, make sure the transfer type is set to Loaded Point Cloud in the Transformation Tool window and then click Apply. You will see the transformation applied on the fly to the point cloud data sets loaded into the viewer. Use the profile tool as we did before to examine the alignment quality between strips after the calibration values are applied to them. Note that some manual adjustments to the automatically calculated values may be needed to achieve optimal between strip alignments. Assuming that you are content with the automatically calculated boresight correction values, change the transform type from loaded point cloud to selected point cloud files and click apply. This will then permanently transform the point cloud dataset coordinate values. Thus, it is important to only do this once you have confirmed that boresight correction values are optimal. In the final step of this basic strip alignment workflow, we will combine the calibrated strips into a single point cloud file. To do this, navigate to the merge function found under the point cloud tools section of the data management toolbox. Make sure the four final processed point cloud data sets are selected as inputs for the merge tool. Set the output path and name of the output data set. Then click OK to run the tool. Click Yes to add the final result to your current project. Thank you for watching and please be sure to check out Green Valley's YouTube page for more LiDAR 360 tutorials.